Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL N4 which is finding the missing angles within quadrilaterals. Okay so pretty much all of these problems are just very simple phrases and they tell you uh, certain angle measures within quadrilaterals. Remember quadrilaterals are just shapes with four sides uh, meaning they're also going to have four degree values or four angles. And so they're going to give you at least one and then try to get you to find out at least one, maybe two, maybe three of the other angles in that uh, quadrilateral or parallelogram uh, in this case. So all we're going to do is we know that all four angles of a quadrilateral, quadrilateral uh, have to add up to 360 degrees. And so what we can do is we see that one of the angle measures is 100. Okay. And so we know that one of them has to be 100. So let me draw a quick parallelogram here. Okay, the type of shape they give you, the type of quadrilateral they give you is going to make kind of a difference, right? Um, okay, so let's say one of these is 100. Let's say this one is 100 because that's what the problem says. It says one angle is 100. Okay, so what else do we know then? Well, with a parallelogram, we know that the opposite angle is also going to be 100, right? These are going to match. And we also know that these are going to match. So I'm going to do two rings there and two rings here. Okay. And so what we can do is we can just make this an arbitrary number or a variable. We'll do X. Okay. And that has to be X as well because, again, they're going to be the same thing anyway. And so we'll just write that all four of them have to add up to 360 degrees. So we'll go 100 plus 100 plus X plus X equals 360. Now when we combine like terms, we'll be at 200 plus 2X equals 360. And then we'll subtract 200 from both sides. So we have 2y equals 160, and then to get, I'm sorry, not y, x, jeez. Oh, uh, so to get the x by itself, we are going to divide both sides by 2, and x is going to equal 80, meaning each of these angles are going to be 80 degree angles. So when it asks for the three missing angles, we're going to, we're going to say 100 and 80, and 80. Okay, so we'll go back over here, do 100 followed by 80 followed by 80. Okay, next parallelogram has one angle that measures 120 degrees. What are the other three angles? Okay, so it's the same logic as this time as this last time right here. Uh, in fact, I think I'm just going to use the same picture pretty much except change some of the work so that means this angle is going to be 120 therefore this angle is going to be 120 and then we just got to find what x equals so we know one of them is going to be 120 so now I'll do the work over here so I'll do uh, 120 plus 120 plus x plus x and all of that is going to equal 360 degrees. Combine like terms, we have 240 plus 2x equals the 360. Subtract 240 from both sides. So we are left with 2x equals 120 and dividing both sides by two gives us x equals 60, which means these two angles are going to be 60. You add all of them up, it'll be 360. So our missing angles are 120, 60, and then 60. 120, 60, and 60. Okay. Uh, next, a quadrilateral has two angles that measure 110 and 40. The other two angles are in a ratio of 10 to 11. 
what is the measure of those two angles? Okay, so it doesn't take that long for you to get the problems that throw some ratios at you. Do not worry about the ratios. I'll explain kind of an easy way to think about it. So first we'll, uh, we'll say a quadrilateral has 110 and 140 degrees, okay? Um, and you can draw any quadrilateral. We can do like maybe a trapezoid, a weird looking trapezoid thing. And we can say that this angle is 40 and this angle is 110. Okay, we'll pretend these two other angles are gonna be different. Okay, and so it says the ratio is 10 to 11. So what we're first gonna do is we're gonna find what these two angles have to add up to, right? Because all four angles have to add up to 360. So we're gonna subtract these out and figure out what's left. So we'll go 360 minus 110 minus 40, and that is going to equal 210. Okay, so we know that x plus y has to equal 210. And the only thing we know about x and y is that there is a ratio of 10 to 11 between them. You can think of ratios as fractions, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write 10 over 21 and 11 over 21, and this is why. When we're saying 10 to 11, we're saying 10 out of every 21 parts of our number because we're doing 10 out of 10 plus 11 10 plus 11 is 21 so 10 to 11 is 10 parts out of the total 21 parts whereas the 11 is saying 11 parts out of the total 21 parts so you can kind of think of these as two parts of a whole because well we can add 10 over 21 plus 11 over 21 that's just 21 over 21 which is just one right these are two parts of a whole of a single number a single whole number, which is one. And so uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to multiply these fractions by the value we have left to find sort of a percentage of how much X is gonna be and how much Y is gonna be. So I'll start with the 10 over 21. So we'll do 10 over 21 times 210. And uh, just to make it easier, I'm going to do a 2, 10 over 1. Um, you don't have to do that if you could kind of understand what's going on. Okay, so we'll look at 10 and 1, and we'll see we can't really do much there. But we'll go to 21 and 210, and we can clearly see that both have 21. They can be divided by 21, right? 21 divided by 21 is just going to be 1, while 210 divided by 21 is just going to be 10. Okay, so now we're just multiplying 10 times 10, which is going to be 100. 100 over 1 or just 100, right? So this one is going to be equal to 100. So I'm going to write 100 for x. Okay, now let's do the y. We'll do 11 over 21 times the 210, which is going to equal, again, I'll do the 210 over 1. Okay, you can't do anything with 11 or one, but you can, again, divide both of these by 21. So 21 divided by 21 is one. 20, or 210 divided by 21 is going to be 10. All right, what is 11 times 10? That is gonna be 110. And then over one, which you don't have to write, so we have 110. So y is going to equal 110. Okay, now what you might have realized is if you figured out what the uh, x was first, which was 100, you could just kind of subtract this from your number and figure out uh, what's left for y, which is 110. Or you could just do it, um, what I did here. It's good practice. So we know that the angles are uh, 100, 110, 110, and then 140. So uh, trapezoid probably doesn't really fit this super well, but that's okay. I just wanted to illustrate uh, what we were trying to go after. Okay, so the two missing angles are 100 and 110. 100 and 110. Okay, we'll do this one now. So same deal except it is a quadrilateral that has uh, 60 and 145 and the two other angles are uh, 
can be compared with a ratio of 14 to 17. Okay, so same deal as last time, and I won't draw the diagram. I'll just do 360 minus 60 minus 145, and that's is going to equal 155 okay meaning the uh, what's left over for x and y our two missing angles has to add up to 155 okay so uh, we'll come up with our two ratio fractions and it's going to be 14 over a grand total of 31 and then 17 over a grand total of 31. So we'll do 14 over 31 times 155 over one. And for this problem, you could try to reduce in some areas. Um, you might be successful, you might not be successful. Uh, but from what I'm seeing here, 31 is a prime number, so we're not gonna try to reduce anything yet. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna multiply across and uh, see what happens here. So we're going to do 14 times 1, which is going to be 14. No, we're not. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to do 14 times 155, which is going to be 2,170 over 31 times 1 is 31. And so uh, 2,170 divided by 31 is going to be 70, okay? So x is going to be 70, so one of our missing angles is going to be 70. Now again, you can either um, continue or, uh, uh, repeat the process, so do 17 over 31 times 155, or uh, you can just uh, do reduction, right? Well, if x is 70, what does y have to be? What is 155 minus 70? That's going to be 85. And so that way I, I can just skip all that work. So our two missing angles are going to be 70 and 85. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm going to skip all the way to 90 apparently. And when we get to 90, um, it's the exact same problem just with different numbers so they give us a quadrilateral they give us two angles and then we got to figure out what the remaining angles are based off of a ratio okay so that's where i'm going to end the video take care and stay safe and i will catch you for the next ixl tutorial video goodbye